Hey everybody, welcome back to the Here to See channel. Got another Here journal for you. Genesis chapter 32 in the first book of the Bible, Genesis. The Here to See channel focused on sharing pearls of wisdom, nuggets of knowledge, understanding the difficult, and instructions for a better life. We're reading through the entire book of Genesis, a chapter at a time, and doing a Here journal on each chapter. Check out replicate.org to learn more about here journaling. But now, let's read and listen to Genesis chapter 32 in the New Living Translation from the Version Bible app. And then I'll share my here journal with you. Chapter 32 As Jacob started on his way again, angels of God came to meet him. When Jacob saw them, he exclaimed, This is God's camp! So he named the place Mahanaim. Jacob sends gifts to Esau. Then Jacob sent messengers ahead to his brother Esau, who was living in the region of Seir in the land of Edom. He told them, Give this message to my master Esau. Humble greetings from your servant Jacob. Until now I have been living with Uncle Laban, and now I own cattle, donkeys, flocks of sheep and goats, and many servants, both men and women. I have sent these messengers to inform my Lord of my coming, hoping that you will be friendly to me. After delivering the message, the messengers returned to Jacob and reported, We met your brother Esau, and he is already on his way to meet you with an army of four hundred men. Jacob was terrified at the news. He divided his household, along with the flocks and herds and camels, into two groups. He thought, if Esau meets one group and attacks it, perhaps the other group can escape. Then Jacob prayed, O God of my grandfather Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, O Lord, you told me, return to your own land and to your relatives, and you promised me, I will treat you kindly. I am not worthy of all the unfailing love and faithfulness you have shown to me, your servant. When I left home and crossed the Jordan River, I owned nothing except a walking stick. Now my household fills two large camps. O oh Lord, please rescue me from the hand of my brother Esau. I am afraid that he is coming to attack me, along with my wives and children. But you promised me I will surely treat you kindly, and I will multiply your descendants until they become as numerous as the sands along the seashore, too many to count. Jacob stayed where he was for the night. Then he selected these gifts from his possessions to present to his brother Esau. Two hundred female goats, twenty male goats, two hundred ewes, twenty rams, thirty female camels with their young, Forty cows, ten bulls, twenty female donkeys, and ten male donkeys. He divided these animals into herds and assigned each to different servants. Then he told his servants, Go ahead of me with the animals, but keep some distance between the herds. He gave these instructions to the men leading the first group. When my brother Esau meets you, he will ask, Whose servants are you? Where are you going? Who owns these animals? You must reply, they belong to your servant Jacob, but they are a gift for his master Esau. Look, he is coming right behind us. Jacob gave the same instructions to the second and third herdsmen, and to all who followed behind the herds. You must say the same thing to Esau when you meet him, and be sure to say, Look, your servant Jacob is right behind us. Jacob thought, I will try to appease him by sending gifts ahead of me. When I see him in person, perhaps he will be friendly to me. So the gifts were sent on ahead while Jacob himself spent that night in the camp. Jacob Wrestles with God During the night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two servant wives, and his eleven sons and crossed the Jabbok River with them. After taking them to the other side, he sent over all his possessions. This left Jacob all alone in the camp, and a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. When the man saw that he would not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of its socket. Then the man said, Let me go, for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. 
What is your name? The man asked. He replied, Jacob. Your name will no longer be Jacob, the man told him. From now on, you will be called Israel, because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Please tell me your name, Jacob said. Why do you want to know my name? The man replied. Then he blessed Jacob there. Jacob named the place Peniel, which means face of God. For he said, I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been spared. The sun was rising as Jacob left Peniel, and he was limping because of the injury to his hip. Even today, the people of Israel don't eat the tendon near the hip socket because of what happened that night when the man strained the tendon of Jacob's hip. And that was Genesis chapter 32 in the New Living Translation from the Version Bible app. Now for my hair journal. First the highlight, Genesis chapter 32 verses 24 to 32. Jacob wrestles with God. Verse 24, this left Jacob all alone in the camp and a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. When the man saw that he would not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of its socket. Then the man said, let me go for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? The man asked as he replied, Jacob. Your name will no longer be Jacob, the man told him. From now on you will be called Israel because you fought with God and with men and have won. Please tell me your name, Jacob said. Why do you want to know my name? The man replied. Then he blessed Jacob there. Jacob named the place Peniel which means face of God. For he said, I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been spared. The sun was rising as Jacob left Peniel, and he was limping because of the injury to his hip. Even today, the people of Israel don't eat the tendon near the hip socket because of what happened that night when the man strained the tendon of Jacob's hip. So, what's my explanation? Genesis chapter 32 includes Jacob's wrestling with an angel of God. There's a debate among biblical scholars as to whether this was a physical battle or a spiritual one. Whichever it was, the ultimate outcome was that Jacob was given the name Israel and the people did receive and continue to receive the blessing of God. As we believers in Jesus Christ are made joint heirs of this very blessing as well. So, what's the application for us today? There are times when we struggle. We wrestle against temptation against spiritual and physical attacks, and yes, there are times we may struggle with God. The ultimate outcome would be that we have a stronger, more vibrant relationship with the Lord. We must remain steadfast in our faithful and obedient walk with Him. Reference, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you that's not common to man. God is faithful, and He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, He will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 to 5. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope and hope does not put us to shame because God, God's love, has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. 1 John 4.4 4. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you 
is greater than he who is in the world. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through him who strengthens me. James chapter 1 verses 2 to 4 Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 to 10. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So, what's my response? Lord, help me to bring my thoughts, words, and deeds in line with your will. Help me to prosper in the midst of your trials. Help me to forgive those that would sin against me. I pray for those that do not know you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, how about you? Why don't you try here journaling? Highlight, explain, apply, respond. You'll be glad you did. Comment below. Share your experiences with us. Do you know Jesus as your Savior? If not, read the Gospel of John chapter 3 to learn about His forgiveness. And talk to God about it. You can talk to God about anything. He loves you. He's waiting. Seek Him now. God bless.